Hey, it's Dr. Karen Can. Welcome to this week's edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And if you are new to my channel or haven't done so yet, would really love if you could subscribe and click the notification bell if you'd like, so you would get notified every time I do a new video. So this week's Spiritual Medicine Digest is called Collective Consciousness Emergence. That's a lot of letters. <laughs> Sometimes when I talk to Source and I say, what's our topic for this week, you know? Uh, sometimes it's not that easy to pronounce. Anyway, so this week we're talking about what's going on with collective consciousness. What is emergence? Well, it is in this case, the emergence of the, for lack of better words, understanding or comprehension around the concepts of polarity and unity. And, and some of us in the spiritual realm are like, woo, emergence of unity, yay. <laughs> now, this is what I've kind of sort of seen uh, online and from various spiritual groups, is all this stuff about unity, 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 you know, polarity's bad. <laughs> Let's stop doing this polarity. And I get the whole idea of, you know, the polarizing of, you know, uh, blue versus red or conservatives and, 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 um, um, uh, Democrats, liberals, liberals. That's what I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's funny because I did conservatives on my left side. So I meant conservatives and liberals anyway. Um, and of, you know, dark and light and all those kinds of contrasts, right? However, I think in the spiritual community, sometimes we get a little mm, judgmental around this whole idea of polarity in favor of unity as if one is better than the other. Well, guess what that is? Polarity. <laughs> and you're like, no, right? Um, so what if we imagined that it's not a concept of either polarity as our existence in this 3D to 5D you know, world versus unity, but maybe it's both. Now, I know that seems maybe counter to some folks that are like, nope, unity consciousness, that's where it's at, period, right? I think every time that we get to a place where we think we know what it's supposed to be and we get staunchly like entrained or, or just super firm standing in that stance, <sighs> then we know we're not actually on the right track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been there many times, many times. Um, so how can we, how can we both have polarity, unity, and all be good? Like all, it all be like making sense and working for us, right? One of my favorite lines and people who know me well know I do say this a lot whatever works, which means if whatever I'm saying today does not resonate with you, you're like, she's full of S, I don't get her at all, I'm unsubscribing, that's all good, okay? Um, if it does work for you, if it does resonate and you possibly entertain some of these ideas, I'm not saying they're right or wrong, they're just perceptions, right? But if you entertain them and somehow it works for you in your life, you meaning that you have more, maybe some more calmness, more peace, more positive manifestations, uh, obstacles don't seem as big a deal, you deal with them better, you have better relationships, you have more prosperity, then and more health, that's what I'm talking about. If it works for you, then keep doing that. If it doesn't work for you, then do something different, okay? So getting back to this whole collective consciousness emergence, from my perspective as a light medicine doctor, okay, and uh, an alchemist, if you will, I've been observing the shift in light, if you will, of the collective, of all of us humans and beings on the planet. And it definitely has been elevating. However, if you just take what you're seeing on the media, you'd think that the world's going to H-E double hockey sticks, right? If that's what we used to say in Canada if you didn't want to swear. Yes, I'm Canadian. <laughs> so, so, okay, well, what's going on, right? 
the really cool thing that's going on from my perspective is that things that were hidden are now being seen in the open. And so it seems like, oh, maybe there's more entities around and they're wrecking havoc on the planet, blah, 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 right? And we judge that as bad. Well, what if, what if uh, those entities were always there, unable to be healed and hidden in a way that they could not be healed because something else had to heal first, yada, yada, yada. Then now they're being revealed. So it theoretically looks like there's more of them even though they had been hidden before from our view. And same thing with some of the truths coming out about certain manipulations and things like that, that we just kind of took for granted were true. <laughs> things that happen in our school system, things that happen in our governmental system, in all these different ways, there are multiple things that could potentially cause people trauma once they know the truth, so-called truth about these things. On the other hand, if you just kind of go, oh, well, things are being revealed. Okay, I'm just going to let go of my, my reactivity right now, right? Then, then it makes a, makes a huge difference. So our collective consciousness is actually elevating. When I check in, and I don't really believe it's just wishful thinking, when I check into the light score of collective consciousness, it just keeps not quickly, but slowly growing uh, more and more. And if you think about it, I mean, even at the speed that it is so-called growing, um, that's still pretty fast because it's within our lifetime, right? So this idea of unity is becoming more popularized, yet there may be some misconceptions around it that uh, demonize polarity. So for example, um, you know, you, for most humans, right, in order to perceive one thing in this human 3D form, they need to experience the contrast of that thing. So they have a comparison. It just kind of makes sense. So we are, at the moment, living in these carbon-based 3D bodies. So this idea of opposites or polarity kind of sort of works for us because we have these contrasts. We can't necessarily appreciate, um, you know, dark without light or light without dark. We can't appreciate or um, really comprehend hot without cold, cold without hot, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, in Chinese medicine, of course, there's tons of polarity, yin and yang, right? So what does it mean to move to unity consciousness? Polarity is going to exist on, in some way, shape or form in our world, even as we go to 5D. Some people are like, sacrilege, how can you say that? <laughs> on some practical basis. Consciousness, on the other hand, okay, consciousness, a uh, different story. Consciousness, unity consciousness, means that on some level, we recognize, especially in the collective consciousness, is getting more and more towards that unity consciousness, on some level, we recognize that we're all made of the same stuff. Thanks to quantum physics, this actually kind of makes sense now. We're all made of the same stuff. And some would argue or teach that we are made of love. All of us are made of love. Now, Source did tell me, and I translated, that the singularity, not the one that Ray Kurzweil talks about, you know, of AI being like, overtaking the world. Anyway, so so not that singularity. The 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 still point, okay, that's why I call it singularity. And the stillness, which I is loosely translated to the zero point field, that the first iteration of something we talked about last week in the spiritual medicine digest is big love. So we're all made of the same stuff. And if one believes that, you know, you may have heard in quantum physics around, you know, the experiment where they shot photons, you know, miles apart in opposite directions and the minute they manipulated or electrons sorry uh the minute they manipulated one the other one responded like but there was no time lag they were entangled if you will so if all matter is somehow entangled and if we did come from the big bang then that means we truly are connected in some way, even though it doesn't seem like we are because we have this space between us. But if we look uh, in, a, a, say, a super, super, super powerful microscope, we'll actually see that most of our atoms are made of space. And um, zero 
you know, the zero point field, uh, Lynn McTaggart calls it the field. Many people call it all, you know, sorts of things, but um, the, the one field, great movie to watch, actually shows us with science how we are connected. Now in the past, we talked about the ether and then, you know, people poo-pooed it, said that doesn't exist. And then they did prove that it actually exists, but it's still kind of, you know, the science kind of behind, you know, uh, and teaching this to our um, young people in university and so on and so forth. So we are made of the same stuff. We are connected through this seemingly empty space, which could be called the ether. And if I see a person that is maybe not so nice, <laughs> however, I recognize that we are made of the same stuff. And the way I treat them and the way I perceive them has an impact on everyone, including myself, then I'm going to think twice about how I treat that person and really become more conscious around how I treat that person. For those that are sensitive souls like me, empaths, etc., we have a natural tendency to see life this way and to see others this way. In fact, it's very easy for us to feel someone else's pain or sadness. Um, why we don't feel their joy as much, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> we have a human negative bias, I suppose. That may change very quickly with uh, our collective consciousness rising. So we are connected on some level in some way. And just the acknowledgement of that, even if it's like a tiny little, you know, perception over here is enough to have our collective consciousness emerge into a new state of being, if you will, where it becomes almost automatic that uh, we see or perceive others in a different way, that we are more connected even emotionally to maybe nature or our neighbors or other people, be able to be empathetic, uh, much more uh, quickly, that would literally stop wars and all that kind of stuff overnight. I know some industries may suffer some losses, but I am pretty sure they could reconfigure the industry for something that is more, let's just say, productively light or, or you know, nature-based or something like that. <laughs> I am absolutely sure they have the wherewithal to do that. Uh, if there was the impetus to do that. So it's up to us who are sensitive souls who would like to truly resonate that field of love to moment to moment recognize our collective consciousness emergence, not necessarily going from polarity and saying erase, erase all that and go into unity, but recognizing that there's some aspects of our life that is always going to be polarized and that's okay. And we can have this unified perception, well, it's actually the truth, of who we really are as the one at the same time. So it's polarity consciousness going to unity consciousness that we're, that we're going to. However, polarity in and of itself is just part of you know, this 3D experience. So what I'd like to do for this week's Topican Healing Activation is do a little mini healing around whatever might be in the way or blocking you from experiencing that unity consciousness, that you are part of the one, and at the same time, not necessarily having to empathically feel trauma or sadness or anger from the others, so-called individuated beings, because you currently are most of you anyway, uh, are in a physical human form. Uh, so it's not either or, it's and. If you'd like to receive, you can go ahead and just make that intention to receive the activation. I'm going to walk you through the stillness through observing internal movement. That is our doorway to stillness, one of the doorways to stillness. If it works for you, great. You can practice this on your own. Go ahead and rub your hands, get some energy and chi or prana, you know, flowing. Yes. And then relax. If it's safe for you to do so, you can close your eyes. 
Just notice any vibrations or movement in your body. Maybe you see the whole body in your perception and just take in the entire body and, and just perceive movement somewhere, especially where you rubbed your hands. And as you continue looking for that and following the flow, I'm going to go ahead and speak the Topican Healing Directive. Maybe you would like to perceive as we do the directive, whether or not you notice a shift in your body, in your body's energy movement. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. I now command that anything preventing you from fully being able to at will immerse yourself with the full understanding and experience of unity consciousness be clean, cleared, healed, and resolved in the highest and best way, all directions of time and all timelines where you exist with ease, speed, and grace. Thank you. It's now commanded that whatever is in the way of you experiencing with full delight of your 3D human body experience with all of its different polarities, as well as experiencing unity consciousness, be blessed and healed and resolved in the highest and best way, all directions of time, with speed, ease, and grace, in the highest and best way. Thank you. All right, so just allow those activations to settle into your energy field. Sometimes it can take upwards of a couple of days to fully Soak that in and let that process through. Make sure you drink lots of water. In the meantime, <laughs> let's do a few announcements for this week. I am really excited for Monday's Light Warrior Radio Show because I have the pleasure of interviewing Barbara Ditlow. Now, we had her on talking about human design, but this time we're going to be talking about cults. Yes, cults. Now, I never thought in a million years I'd be talking about cults with someone because I'm like, how relevant is that? You know, we think about Waco, we think about all these, you know, cults we hear about. But after interviewing her, I realized, OMG, I've probably been in one or two or three, and maybe you have two. <laughs> there are specific energies related to a cult. And, um, this is actually more in the forefront now than ever before. Some people will call things COVID cults. You know, they might call, you know, um, Q cults or political cults or whatever. We talk about a lot of those things in the radio show and also how to recognize these things if they're going in your life. In fact, I did not recognize one that I, well, I would now label it as a cult, but, um, that I was involved in because I so wanted and desired to create a system, a governing self-governing system for, um, for the whole world where we could really help people, you know, on a practical level, money wise, governing wise, that kind of thing, setting up these structures. Right. And uh, the leader was very charismatic, uh, really enjoyed this leader. And at the same time, um, after I'd been in it for a number of months, I realized that hmm, the ideas are interesting, definitely. Um, and the, 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 the final result would be amazing, like so totally amazing. However, the big hole that was missing was consciousness. It was not emphasized. It was not the number one thing. And I thought, well, wait a second, Karen, you know that consciousness is the most, if not the number one most important thing to creating heaven on earth, but you're doing all these earthly actions and you're focusing on consciousness, but that leader in that organization is not. They're kind of letting everybody do whatever they want, you know, in that sphere. I'm not, I'm not saying you should, shouldn't do that, but it, it's just like, hmm, how are we going to be successful if consciousness is not the most important thing, which is where I was at. So I kind of went, bye-bye. <laughs> it didn't really resonate with me any longer. Um, and when I talked to Barbara, my guest on Lightwear Radio, I realized, oh, I think there's a cult. Shoot. <laughs> well, I did get out of it, of course. Um, 
and there was no harm done, certainly not to me or, you know, anybody that, you know, I talked to about it. Um, and I had a chance to figure myself and realize that this is actually more common than we think it is. So I asked Barbara some pretty challenging questions during this hour. So I'd love for you to listen in when we air the show live on Monday at 12 noon Eastern. If you can't make it, just click the link afterwards. It'll be archived for you. So I think this is a do not miss kind of show. Um, okay, so let's go to some other announcements. Um, I am very happy to announce that I will be doing a free introduction to divine muscle testing on Tuesday, June 6th at 2 p.m. Eastern. So I'd love for you to save the date. Now, even if you already do muscle testing uh, or maybe use the pendulum or something like that, um, you might still get something out of this class. So make sure you stay on this mailing list because we will be announcing the special um, opt-in and link and all that kind of stuff for you to get registered for that 90-minute uh, course. And uh, we'll give you an opportunity as well to actually share it with people that really um, are like-minded, you know. Uh, so we are going to open it up and allow, you know, people who aren't necessarily already in our community uh, join because I think it's really important for all of us to be able to access our deep intuition right now. And I'd love for people to have that skill because I use it day in and day out. It's been incredible incredibly useful, helped uh, and incredibly a lot of people, myself included, having this skill of divine muscle testing. So we are going to offer that free. And again, it's Tuesday, June 6, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a 90 minute class. And uh, yes, it will be recorded as long as you register. We'll be able to send you the recording uh, automatically. So we will get that link to you in the next few weeks. Uh, but I did want you to block off that time if you can. The other announcement is that the Anxiety SOS program through UWealth Revolution Package B live group sessions are beginning in early June, starting June 9th and then weekly on a Friday. And if you would like some healing from me directly uh, and your household family members, I would highly recommend that you purchase Package B from UWealth Revolution First of all, because, you know, it's an incredible um, tuition, like it, it, it is like 147 or something like that. Um, and normally my programs are at least $497 and some of them thousands of dollars. And this is a rare chance to be able to get the healing from me specifically and personally and live. And um, even if you can't make all of the classes, four classes live, uh, you'll have archives of the recordings as well. And we'll be placing you in the healing basket for 24 hours uh, during and after each of the classes. And people have loved the program. People that are already in the program, registered in the program, package A or package B, uh, are absolutely loving it and um, getting a lot of intel, if you will, on what may be causing or contributing to symptoms related to anxiety that they never thought of. <laughs> we give you some cheat sheets, testing sheets, uh, Topican Healing Directive specific for those different areas and uh, in the Light Medicine community we actually have a mini course on it as well so you can actually get an idea of what we'll be covering in this program. So Anxiety SOS Package B, uh, um, it will be closing soon, uh, you know obviously before the first class the Package B will be closing so um, I'm going to put the link near this video so you can get that package. Remember that if you register then all your family members in your household are allowed to come to those live sessions. Uh-huh. Yeah. I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> um, now I know some of them might not want to come, but the more the merrier. Um, so you can register and then they don't have to register, but you, you can register and just have them there with you, you know, and they will be included in that healing basket. Uh, you can also put in, uh, to the little form that will send you some of their healing intentions so we can kind of hone in and focus energy towards those goals. So uh, I don't do a lot of live stuff like that anymore. Um, and this is going to be the last one that I know of anyway that we've planned in the next 12 months. So please, if you love uh, light medicine, you love energy healing, and you really enjoy what I do, I highly recommend that you just, you know, jump right on. <laughs> and get package B. And then if you are package A, you can always upgrade to package B as well through 
uh, eWealth Revolution. Just, just let us know if you need that link. It's support at KarenCan.com. All right, so that is it for this week, the Spirits of Medicine Digest. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. You want to know the next time I do a new video. And then uh, feel free to comment below. Let me know what that activation felt like in your body. And if you had some thoughts about polarity, unity, consciousness, what's going on in the world, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.